Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another TheMMATakeOver.com interview. My name is Keith Schillen. Today's guest has been a professional MMA fighter for almost seven years and has a crazy impressive 20-2 professional record and is 3-1 and in the UFC. He returns to action on May 13 at UFC 211 when he takes on Chaz Skelly. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Knight. Jason, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Just now pulling up to the house from the gym. Okay. How how was training today? Uh, training was great, man. I, I did about seven rounds of MMA with wrestling, so okay. I had a, I had a pretty good training session. Okay. Um, so we I just want to say for everyone listening, we thank you for coming on. We know being a fighter, it's really busy, um, especially when you're in training camp. I mean, you guys put in crazy hours. You're you know, lifting weights, you're doing cardio stuff, you're wrestling, boxing, Muay Thai, karate, you know, you got to get, go to the doctors, get checkups and get massages. I mean, you guys do all kinds of crazy stuff. So we appreciate you taking the time, letting to get to know you a little bit, uh, talk about your fight and, and talk about you as a person. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Let's do some of these preliminary questions. Let's get them out of the way. Uh, so first question I always ask everyone is how'd you get in mixed martial arts? Uh, man, I was 14 years old and, you know, just a, a normal kid, you know, that liked to fight. I got in trouble a yep. lot for street fighting. And uh, I had a I had a friend, or now he's, he's more like a, he's my brother-in-law now, but okay. at the time, I barely knew the guy. He come up to me, uh, wanted to teach me how to box. Okay. So he started, uh, he started teaching me how to throw straight punches and it kind of involved, I mean, kind of evolved into mixed martial arts training after a few months. Uh-huh. And, uh, that was just all done in my backyard. Well, this guy, his name is Jay Bullock. He wound up, he, he went to the club one night, just going out to party or whatever. And they were passing out flyers for a place called the Fight Club in Mobile. Uh-huh. Well, Jay Bullock, he comes home. He's like, hey, man, I found this place you can fight. We need to call them and see if they'll let a 14-year-old fight. Uh-huh. Well, I called him up that Monday. I'm like, hey, I'm 14. Can I fight? And uh, they said, dude, I, I don't care if you're 12. If your mama signed for it, I'll let you fight. Okay. Well, I went down there. I signed up that Monday. I fought that Wednesday. Got my first win, and I've been doing it ever since. Okay, so you're 14 years old. You fight somebody. I mean, how old was the guy you were fighting? Uh, he was 19, and actually, he, he just came back from Iraq. Okay, and you know, he he was about like me. You know, didn't really have any kind of martial arts training. He just thought he was a badass. Yeah, and he was telling everybody that night, like, man, I don't want to fight this kid. I don't want to hurt this kid. Well, I went out there and. I beat him in about 30 seconds. I hit him with a few punches. He went for a takedown. Uh-huh. I took his back, sunk in the rear naked choke, and fight was over. All the rest is a wrap. At 14 years old, I mean, that's crazy. At 14 years old, you know, kids are scared to talk to a girl, and you're in there fighting in front of crowds, beating grown men up. Yeah, man, I was I was definitely a different breed. You know, uh, I was getting in street fights from the time I was like six, seven years old, yeah. and just bad as hell. My big brother always beat me up and made me tough so i just you know i had that attitude where i wasn't going to take any shit off of anybody you yeah. know my big brother he's beat me up my whole life what can you do to me you know yeah i'm sure there's not many people back in your hometown that wants to pick fights with you anymore right oh yeah man I, <laughs> after you know after a while when i got into it it at first, you know, I still had, you know, the bigger guys. They wanted to test me or whatever. But after a while, it got to where everybody pretty much left me alone because, you know, they knew I meant business. Uh, so you you talked about, you know, you just left a uh, training camp, uh, or practice, I should say. Uh, who are you, are you training with? Uh, I train at Allen Dutcher MMA Club in the Abbeville, Mississippi. Yeah. And, you know, I pretty much train with the same people I've been training with for the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, I got James Starbs, one of my coaches, my older brother. He he, he doesn't really train much or, or anything. He just kind of pushes me. And then I've got a, a guy that's been with us for a little over a year. His name's Brandon Davis. He's my striking coach. And, you know, he's helped my striking evolve big time. 
my coach, Mike Sanford, he's my jiu-jitsu coach. And, you know, there's a, a bunch of other fighters at our gym that are up and coming. You know, we don't really have any big names there, but I have, you know, a lot of guys that are good competition. And most of our gym is made up of guys around my weight class. So, you know, it just it's a perfect atmosphere for me. Everybody there is like family. And, you know, we get in there and we grind real hard together. Yeah. Now, have you ever thought about going to one of these bigger camps, like Greg Jackson, American Top Team, anything like that? Uh, man, I, I went out to Phuket Top Team in Thailand a few times. Yeah. There's a guy out there named Eric Ers. Uh He's a, the best wrestling coach I've ever seen. And uh, Boy Clark, the owner of the gym, you know, he, he lets me come out there and get in work. And, you know, I love that. And, I mean, I don't mind bouncing around a little bit, you know, yeah. just to – kind of get other looks at other fighters and other fighting styles and stuff. But, I mean, Allen Belcher MMA Club, you know, it's, it's been my home since That's I was home. 15 years old. So, yeah. you know, I believe I'll stay there until I retire. Okay. Um, so let's let's talk. I mean, you got the nickname The Kid. I'm assuming that started when you were 14. Yeah, man. Uh, I think it was my second fight. Um, I was getting ready to fight for the belt. Uh, they had a guy, a little Mexican guy. He was like, I think, 12 and 0 with him. Nobody had beaten him. Yeah. And I think they were pretty much just trying to feed him another win. And uh, they they did an interview before the fight, and the lady, she asked me, she's like, uh, what do you want your nickname to be? And I was like, what do you mean what I want my nickname to be? She's like, well, well we're going to, you know, give you a, uh, we're, we're gonna uh, introduce you with your nickname what do you what do you want it to be and I was like uh, a nickname is not something you pick for yourself that's, that's right. something that yeah. you're given and she's like alright well fuck it we're gonna call you the kids that's how you yeah. are as a kid anyways and yeah. I was like alright well that works for me you know and it stuck with me ever since yeah uh, so let's talk about your unofficial nickname that you get called a lot um, obviously you're from the deep south uh, you you definitely like to scrap. You like to press press the pace. You like to box. Um, you like to talk while you're fighting. Uh, so you've been given the nickname Hick Diaz. Uh, you know, obviously, kind of a, a spin off of Nick Diaz because uh, you guys got to have similar style. That you know, I don't give a shit. I want to fight mentality. Uh, how do you feel about that nickname? Is is that cool? Something you like or or no? Uh, yeah, it doesn't really bother me. You know, it's 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 okay, you know. Uh, I've always liked the DS brothers. I've always liked their style. I always like, you know, how they trash talk, and you know they're they're not scared to fight anybody. They're every time they get in the fight, they're in their head first the the yeah. whole time. So, you know, that really doesn't bother me. Uh, there's one though that uh, John Anik, he's he's called me Mississippi Mean now. Yeah, and I'm loving that. You know, I like, yeah, yeah, I like no, that's a good one. Mississippi that, Mean. That's because a, I mean. No one else. You you can't you can't represent that name unless you're from Mississippi. Sure. And other than me, there's only one other UFC fighter from Mississippi that's you know ever been from Mississippi. You know, like a that uh, you know that originated in Mississippi. There's me, and then there's Chase Sherman, and both of us are from the same gym. You know, and Mississippi mean you know that works for me. You know, I like that one. I mean, the, the thing we talk about the Diaz bros, they have like a cult following. Um, they, I mean, they're like legends, f- and, and you're kind of getting that cult following too, where uh, where people, I mean, they love you. There's a lot of fans love you. Have since you've been in the UFC and you, you know you're on a three fight winning streak, how has your life changed? You know, like how have, have you been recognized more? Have people been requesting interviews more? Things like that. Yeah, man, uh, it's, it's definitely a big change. You know, that went from. You know, a year and a half, two years ago, uh, on a local circuit, you know, everybody knew me. You know, Mississippi, South Mississippi, you know, Alabama, South Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Louisiana. You know, everybody knew who I was. But as far as worldwide, my name was never even heard of. And then, you know, now I'm starting to get guys want to interview me from Ireland. Guys want to interview me from Italy. Guys from the UK. You know, stuff like that. So that tells me right there, you know, my name's getting out there. People's figuring out who Jason Knight is. And, you know, that's what I got in. I got into the sport, you know, just to have fun. But it, it became to where, I, you know, 
holding the belt, that's cool and all. That's that's something that, you know, it's a, it's a bigger achievement. But to me, an even bigger achievement would be for my name to, to go down pretty much in the history books to be in, like, the UFC Hall of Fame, just be one of the greatest. Okay, yeah. You know, I, I would like to be as good as, you know, as well-known as, like, Dan Henderson or Forrest yeah. Griffin, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Guys that I've always looked up to, that's that's my goal is to – to become like them, you know. Uh huh. So let, let's talk about this. I mean, you're kind of starting to make that name. You got a, you got a three fight winning streak. You're you're you lost your first fight in the UFC, which was against Tasui Kawajiri, who's you know a legend in the sport. He's been around forever. And then you've gone on a three fight win streak. You beat Jim Ayers, Ayers in a back and forth fight, and then you had absolute destructions of Daniel Hooker, and then Alex Caceres. Um, did you expect? I mean, like for example, your last fight, Caceres fight, it was one of the ones I think you might even came in as a slight underdog. And, and you just destroyed him. You beat him in every aspect of the game. You beat him in stand up. You hit him on the ground, wrestling, everything. Did you expect the fight to be that dominant? Uh, you, you're, you're saying my last fight with uh, Alex Caceres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you uh, you absolutely won every uh, every aspect of the fight. Did you expect it to be that that dominant of a of a performance? Uh, I mean, I expected it to be a little tougher of a fight. And I mean, he he was hard to hit standing up. Don't get me wrong, but I just uh, I, I knew that you know that this was like the day before my dad's birthday, and like almost a year to the day that he died. And I knew that you know going into that fight that I was just fixing to bring out the best in me, and that's what I did. I got out there and I, I performed, you know. Um. And uh, I really I really expected it to be a little bit harder of a fight. But, you know, I, I was not surprised at all that I got the win and not surprised at all that once I got it to the ground, I was able to dominate. I knew that if the fight hit the ground, you know, it was going to be my world. Mm -hmm. I just thought that, you know, the stand-up would be a little harder. Um, and and I, I give it to him, you know, it was still it was still pretty difficult, but he never he never really opened up much. I, I didn't give him a whole lot of a chance yeah. to, you know, start throwing that flashy style at me to – crazy spin kicks and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I think that helped me out a lot was just just that forward pressure, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, you had, at the end of the fight, you had a really touching moment uh, where you prayed and, and, and thanked uh, that your father was watching down, looking down on you. Uh, that was obviously a really touching moment um, and must have been a really tough situation to be in to fight on, you know, the anniversary of uh, your father's birthday, I should say. Um so let's let's talk about you, you've one thing I know in the past you talked about you had a deviated septum um, heading into the fight with Caceres heading into the fight with uh, Daniel Hooker. Have you been able to get that fixed? Not yet, man. Uh, I haven't I haven't took a break long enough to to get it done. But at the same time, you know, I'm not really that much worried about it. You know, okay. I know that even if I'm holding my breath for three rounds I can make it through it you know my heart will, my heart will push me through the fight regardless you know even if I can't breathe after the first round it's fine it's no big deal yeah um I'm hoping that you know after this fight I can get that surgery set up you know like the mm -hmm. week after the fight and maybe get it done but uh okay. if not you know I mean, if I have to I can finish out this career not being able to breathe and I'll be fine with that yeah now how long is the recovery for something like that do you know I, that that's my thing. I haven't I haven't looked into it hard enough to find out what the recovery time is. Okay. And you know, if I if I go talk to the doctor and he says that the recovery time is two months, then I'm not going to get the surgery for a while because I'm not going to try and take two months off because I, I want to be fighting every, once every two or three months. Yeah. You know, I want to. I have four more fights on this contract. This, I just started a new contract. Yep. This will be my first fight out of the four, and I would love to get all four of these fights this year. That would make five fights in a year. I mean, I know it's highly unlikely, but if I go out there and I perform and I keep asking for it and I stay in their face about it and, you know, just keep begging them for fights, there's a big possibility that I could have five fights this year, you know. All right, so let's talk about your next fight. You're fighting Chaz Kelly. It's part of UFC 211, which is, uh, you know, possibly the most stacked card 
Um, this it's definitely the most stacked card so far this year, and it's getting to that level where it's becoming one of the most stacked cards in history. How excited are you to be on a card that is that loaded with that many big names? Man, it's it's like a dream come true, you know. I'm, I'm getting to fight on a, a real big event, fighting alongside a bunch of guys that you know I've idolized. You know, it's a a bunch of guys that I've looked up to since I was a kid, and you know I'm fighting right there beside them. Yeah, and you know it's, it's just a kind of a dream come true. You know, it's just the year like it, it's crazy. You it, it, it's crazy how it works because I mean a lot of stuff that I thought would never happen. A lot of people that I thought that I would never meet. You know, I, I'm fighting right alongside them now. Yeah, I'm going places that I never thought I would go and stuff like that. So I mean, it's just a a real good feeling. So who is the co coolest person you got to meet so far? Uh, I would probably say my favorite would be Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson, you know, I've, yeah. I've looked up to that man for years. Yeah. And uh, after my last fight with Alex Casillas, I wound up. I, I went to a little nightclub after the fight, ran into Dan Henderson, and Dan Henderson bought me a shot of Patron. Well, so, I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's cool. going to be the... That's got to be the highlight of my career so far. Yeah. What's what's cool is if you keep this run going, when I interview another fighter five, six years from now, they'll be telling me the same story and saying that they got to meet you. Yeah, man, uh, that's cool as shit. You know, you know what when I you mean? think about it. So let, let's... Like, let's uh, uh, I'm sorry, it's good. Like, uh, around my hometown, you know, I've, I've kind of like more or less turned into a local celebrity, which, I mean, it's cool and all, but to me, you know, I'm... I'm still the same guy I was when I was 14, yeah. and I'm never going to change. You know, I don't care if I make a million dollars and I get the belt and become one of the biggest stars the UFC's ever seen. It's not going to change me. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, that, that's what that's what's so weird is like it's it's crazy to see people kind of idolizing me, and I'm just the same old guy. You know, I mean, you didn't idolize me two years ago. Why are you idolizing me now, you know? Yeah, yeah. So so let's talk about Chaz Kelly for a second. Um, obviously, you know, he's been on a nice run himself. He's been on UFC for a while. Um, I know, obviously, you expect to beat him, but um, I know you probably have respect for his game because he's a really good fighter. I mean, there's no way around it. Um, so when you look at him, what areas should do you have to be most aware about? Um, and then on the flip side, what areas, without giving away your strategy – do you expect to exploit? Um, I believe, you know, his, his best tool, you know, to beat me is his wrestling. You know, that's, yeah. that's the only part that I think he's going to be any better than me. And, uh, I mean, I, I really don't know how much better he's going to be because, I mean, I, my wrestling's evolving every day. Yeah. And I know that, you know, he was college wrestler or whatever. But uh, at the same time, wrestling in college is a lot different than wrestling in MMA. Yeah. You know, there's the sure. cage you got to worry about, and there's punches and kicks and knees and everything else you got to worry about. Yeah. And uh, also the submissions. Uh, I believe, you know, if he does get me to the ground, it's going to be a tough fight for either of us on the ground. He's slick on the ground. I'm slick on the ground. I know that I can submit him. I know that he can submit me. Uh -huh. But... Uh, if I'm able to keep this fight standing, if I if I can stop those takedowns, I've watched his stand up, I've watched his fight, and I believe that I would destroy him on the feet. I believe, you know, that I might even be able to finish him on the feet. I know he's he's got a tough chin, he's gonna be tough to finish. But if I don't finish him on the feet, I'm I'm just gonna pick him apart. Uh -huh. So say, you know, you you beat him, you stop him, that'll probably put you in the top ten rankings. Uh, who would you want I, next? I don't know. I don't know if it'll put me in the top ten. I think at least the top fifteen. Okay. If I'm not in the top fifteen, I think that after this, is it's very logical for them to at least give me a top fifteen opponent. Okay. Any anyone in particular you're looking for? Uh, after my last fight, I called out the Korean Superboy, Super yeah. Dino Choi. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's the fight I want. UFC yeah. knows that's the fight that I want. And, you know, I, I'm not even going to ask them again. You know, if they ask me, hey, who do you want to fight? I'm just going to tell them, look, you already know. I told you I want to fight. 
And, you know, if they give me that fight good, if they don't, then I'll go ahead and fight the next guy they put in front sure. of me, try to beat him, and, you know, keep working my way up until they do give me that fight. Now, what particular about Duo Choi that stands out that you really want to fight him? Man, uh, really, I didn't really didn't care to fight him until I watched him and Cub Swanson fight. You know, those yeah. are two guys that I, I would like to fight both of them. Sure. But uh, Duho Choi, he he's uh, more reasonable. You know, right now Cub Swanson, he's so much further ahead of me in the rankings that it's it's unethical to even ask for that fight. Yeah. But you know, Korean Superboy, that's that's something that could actually happen. Yeah. So uh, I want to fight him because I mean. You, whenever you see the, you see him get out there and you see him perform, he's just wide ass open, balls to the wall the whole fight. He he doesn't stop coming forward, and no matter what you hit him with, no matter how bad you hurt him, he's still in the fight. He's he's there to win, you know. He he's there to grit it out and fight to the bitter end, no matter what. And you know that's the kind of fight I want. I want to fight somebody who wants to fight me just as bad as I want to fight them. They want to get in there and win just as bad as I do. And uh, I believe, you know, if, if me and him get in there and we fight, it's just going to be, you know, one for the history books, one that everybody's going to remember forever. Yeah. And, I mean, like, uh, if you remember the fight with uh, Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner, I mean, that was a fight that nobody will ever forget. Yeah, of course. And, I mean, Forrest Griffin, of course, he went on to become a champion. He did good in his career. But uh, Stephen Bonner, he really, he really didn't do a whole lot. Yeah, but you're never going to that forget level. who Stephen Bonner is yeah. because of that fight. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. I mean, Stephen Bonner obviously had a successful career, but not to the level that Forrest Griffin had. Uh, so let's so let's talk about you know you're talking about you've talked about big names. So let's talk about the biggest name, uh, Conor McGregor. Obviously, you had gotten to you know a little. Uh, I don't know what the word would say be like. You got a little beef with him. You you kind of said you didn't like him. A lot of I'll call you know, say something negative about Conor McGregor. All his fans are gonna come out and kind of coming at you. So uh, so I got kind of two parts to that. What don't you like about him? And on the flip side, um, had, did you have any like interaction with him to make that happen, or is it just kind of from the outside perspective? Oh, uh, I've never really liked him because you know his attitude, the way he he talks shit outside of the ring. You know what I mean? Of course, talking talking all the trash inside the ring and getting in there yeah. fighting, that's a different thing. I mean, you're in the middle of a fight, tensions are high, you know, you're across the ring, you're fighting this guy. Talk as much shit as you want, yeah. but, I mean, you don't have to walk around every day of your life being a cocky prick just because it, it makes you money. You know, I mean, the way I look at it is if I can't be myself and have people like me, then, you know, what the hell am I in the sport for? You know, I, I don't care. You know, if I can't be myself and you like me, then it wasn't there for you to like me. You know, uh, I just, yep. I don't understand, you know, I just don't like the way that, you know, he portrays to be, you know, just such a cocky, arrogant prick just to try and, you know, make, yeah, make a, a paycheck, I guess, I guess you could say, yeah. just to try and boost up the ratings. Sure. And uh, before my first UFC fight, um, I was getting ready to weigh in. Conor McGregor, he fought the night after me, and he was doing, like, a, a, a public workout or whatever. Well, when he finishes the public way out, uh, the weigh-in, he comes walking off the stage, and I asked him, I was like, hey, man, can I get a picture with you? Well, he goes to put his arm around me. I was like, no, nah, man, let's, let's take one like we're squaring off, you know, because Conor McGregor at the time, he's a, he's an idol for everybody. Everybody yeah, of loves course. Conor McGregor. So I thought, you know, it'd be cool to get a picture facing off of Conor McGregor. Yeah. Well, then uh, whenever I asked him to take this picture, he's like, oh, you're a fighter, eh? I was like, yeah. He said, uh, what division? I said, 145. Yeah. And he gets all up my face. like, oh, you think you're going to make it, little man? I'm fucking right. You know, it's just a matter of time. And, you know, he, we kind of, kind of, you know, had a little stare down or whatever. And it just told me right then, you know, that, He's not, you know, he's just a, a, a cocky, arrogant bastard who thinks he's better than everybody. Uh -huh. And, you know, he's he's good. Don't get me wrong. He's a great fighter. But, I mean, you don't have to be a dickhead to everybody. Yeah. So, so you had this, obviously, interaction with him. You're hoping to eventually get that fight. Um, so, so, let's, so let's say you get that fight. What happens in that fight? How do you win? Uh... 
right now, you know, I mean, I, I've got to do a lot of work as far as sure. stand up. I know that, you know, if, we, if I get in there and I fight standing up with him, it's going to be a tough ass fight. I, I don't think he would finish me as easy as he does a lot of these guys because he's able to get inside of people's heads and he's got them scared before the fight or got them so mad before the fight. And, you know, I'm not one of those guys that you're going to get inside my head and intimidate me. I'm, I'm going to fight the same regardless of what you say or how you talk or whatever. You know, I think that I would do a lot better than a lot of these, these fighters have. But uh, if I was able to get him to the ground, you know, if I'm able to improve my wrestling enough to where I can take him down and keep him down, if I get Conor McGregor to the ground, I will beat his ass on the ground. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, standing up-wise, as of right now, yeah, I, I would say he's probably got the advantage standing up. But if I take that man down, I guarantee you I win the fight. Okay. All right, so let's talk about you outside the ring. Let's get to know a little bit more about you. What do you like to spend? You know, you're outside. You're not training. You get a little spare time. How do you like to spend it? Uh, I've got three kids, and I've got a fiance. Okay. I've got my little boy. I keep him. You know, he's with me 24-7, and I get my daughters every other weekend. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's just how I spend my time. When, I, yeah. when I'm not at the gym, I'm sitting at the house doing family time. Watching TV, kick back, chilling, whatever, you know. Yeah. And whenever I have my kids, we're all just playing around, doing whatever. And, you know, I mean, every now and then, maybe after the fights and stuff, I'll go out and party a little bit. And, uh, you know, whenever I'm I'm not training, like I'm not in a training camp, I go mud riding, you know, okay. stuff like that, just have fun. You like the outdoors stuff. Yeah, man, I I got a couple four wheelers and just go go cool. out every now and then, play around and stuff. Uh, just have me a little bit of fun, you know. Whatever I can do to have fun, you know, hang out with my buddies and stuff like that. But mainly, my main thing is just whenever I'm not training, I want to try to spend as much time with my family as I can sure. and just enjoy the the family life. All right, so obviously, the, you know, your 145 pounder is a big matchup. The same night you're fighting, you got Frank Yeager, Yair Rodriguez. I'm sure that's a fight you're interested in. Either guy could be a possible opponent one day. What's your prediction for that fight? Uh, hold on. Say, say that one more time. I, I'm saying the 145-pound uh, matchup, the same night as yours, you got Frank Yeager and Yair Rodriguez. Obviously, those are two guys that you could eventually one day fight. So what's your prediction for that fight? Um. I believe, you know, if Yair Rodriguez is able to keep the space, you know, stay on the outside and impose his will, Yair should win, he should win the fight uh, if he's able to stay on the outside. But, I mean, Frank Yeager, he's not a man that's going to just let you stay at range. And, I, you know, I believe that if, if Frank Yeager gets in there and makes it a nasty dog fight and gets in his face, then he should dominate Yair Rodriguez. All right. But at the same time, you know, if Yair is able to keep that space and get off his, his crazy techniques that he throws, then he's going to beat Frankie Edgar. So, you know, that's a, that's a toss-up. Okay. It just depends on, you know, which fighter goes out there and imposes their will. Okay, so now let's get to you. Last prediction. Your fight against Chaz Kelly, how's that, fin- how's that fight finish? Uh, I say... It's either it's either going to be one of two things. It's either going to be uh, a hard fought decision with a fight of the night win for me, or one of us is getting submitted. Okay. Uh, and I don't plan to be the guy to get submitted. You know, All right. I, I I know that he can do it, and I can submit him. But you know, it's either going to be a hard fought decision where I get my hand raised, or somebody's getting tapped out. All right. Um, so, listen, I know you're a very busy man. We appreciate taking the time speaking with us. I'm going to let you get out of here. My very last question for you, Jason, is have you submitted to the takeover? Yes, sir. Jason Knight has submitted to the takeover. Uh, Jason, we wish you good luck in your fight and all future fights, and we welcome you to the MMA Takeover family. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, we appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our interview with UFC fighter Jason Knight. Make sure to check out his next fight at UFC 211 on May 13th when he, when he fights Chaz Skelly. Also, to continue to receive the best MMA coverage, head over to our website, themmatakeover.com. That's the T H E 
MMATakeover.com. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for listening.